Good afternoon, folks. Um, there's a vital emergency here in my house. I have run out of coffee. So the good news from your point of view is this is a short video, so I can go and buy some more. We're looking at this family here, the Amin family. This is SQA pages 95 to 95, just like benzene, single page. So we'll look at these three properties of amines. Let's start with what an amine is. An amine is basically like ammonia, where you have replaced one or more of the hydrogens with an alkyl chain. Alkyl, fancy word, just means carbon chain. So let's stick with the simplest amine, which would be this. Uh, we have our non-bonded pair of electrons, of course, which enables uh, amines to do their basic thing in the same way as ammonia can do. It's a happy non-bonded pair. Uh, in the same way as ammonia can do uh, basic things except incoming hydrogen ions and so on. I think what we'll do is first we'll look at their classification. Now, what I've done here is I've only replaced one of the hydrogens, which makes this a primary amine. You can probably work out in your head. Go ahead and work out. I challenge you to work out what a secondary and tertiary amine is. It's not going to strain your brain too much. Secondary amine, of course, would involve replacing this with a CH3, and a tertiary amine would involve replacing all three of the hydrogens um, with a CH3. Please note just a little teaching point here. Uh, if I'm drawing the bond to this carbon here, it can't go to the hydrogen, so I don't draw it CH3, I just tend to do it as H3C, just to clarify. There, the bond should always go to the correct atom. I know I look incredibly scruffy, but if you look at the technicalities, I'm usually careful in that way. So they can be classified as primary, secondary, or tertiary, thirdary um, amines. What else did I want to run through with you? I wanted to run through... Construction classification, uh, yeah, that's all good so far. Let's have a look at their physical properties, because this is a favourite multiple choice question. Uh, amines. If they have got one or more hydrogens left on them, like this, for example, then this uh, can get involved in hydrogen bonding, because there is a large delta uh, En here. This is a higher EN number. This is a lower EN number. If I, if I can find the time, I'll put a link up here to my bonding video for higher if you're not sure what the consequence of this is. This means hydrogen bonds form between this molecule and its neighbouring ammonia, uh, amine molecule, sorry, and you get higher boiling and melting points, which is excellent. This one, represented by here, cannot do hydrogen bonding. And this is why it crops up as a favourite question in the multiple choice. Sort of a trick question. They'll give you, say, four different amine molecules, and they'll ask which one of these is the highest boiling point. And at first glance, you have no way of knowing. But the simplest answer to that was it will be the one with hydrogen bonding. So as long as there's at least one H attached to the nitrogen, you can do the hydrogen bonding, and it'll have a high melting and boiling point. So that's melting and boiling points. Uh, there's also solubility in water. Let me check and see what the SQA wants you to know. Solubility? Oh my goodness, hey. Get yourself a better tutor, one that can spell. Just before we come on to solubility, I noticed I was just run, uh, looking through the SQA and they're, they're being quite sneaky. They, they point, they're pointing out that if you have this amine compared to... compared to this amine, then uh, this will have a lower boiling point than this. Just again, these these are isomeric because you've got the, um, the hydrogen bonding involved here. Sorry, I'm trying to think ahead and that's why I'm dithering in vocally. I should not try and think ahead, just focus on one thing at a time. Hey, These are isomeric, but my point being that um, it doesn't matter if they're isomeric or not. One reason for having them isomeric is so that their van der Waals, their, their London dispersion forces are equal, and it's only the hydrogen bonds that are changing the melting and boiling points. Again, go and watch the video on bonding if you're not sure about that. Right, in the case of solubility in water, they are quoting the fact that both primary, secondary, and tertiary amines can actually dissolve in water because they can form hydrogen bonds with water. That seems to contradict what I just said here. That's because this can form a hydrogen bond with the water, but not with another molecule of itself because of the presence of these electrons here. 
So primary, secondary, tertiary amines, all soluble in water, provided the carbon chain here is not too long. The reason for this is another hangover from higher chemistry. The longer this carbon chain, the more non-polar this becomes and the less likely this molecule is to dissolve. So the small amines, when I say small, I mean short carbon chain amines. Small amines, both primary, secondary and tertiary, they're all soluble in water. Um, but uh, as I said, if you increase the length of this chain, become less and less soluble in water. Coming back to here, we can tick these boxes. What we need to have a look at is the reactions. Uh, it's, it's very simple nowadays, actually. It has been dumbed down since a few years back. Basically, amines are weak bases in the same way as ammonia is. So therefore, it, they can do what ammonia can do, and they can react with acids to form salts. I think I'll give you a specific example of this because there was something that was slipped in just a couple of years back to do with carboxylic acids. Let me just go and find that for you. That's, I found what I was looking for, folks. I was about to say sorry for the delay. There was no delay from your point of view. Um, let's have a look at this. Uh, specifically, yeah, the reaction of ammonium or ammonia amines, even get it right, hey? Amines plus a carboxylic acid. So the general format is this. The amine reacts with a carboxylic acid to form what's called an alkyl ammonium salt. That sounds horrendous, but I'll show you what it is. It's actually fine. Alkyl ammonium salt, which if you then heat, changes into an amide. Let's show what that might look like for an example of this, because this is relatively new uh, and it's easy to slip under your radar. Um, so if we took uh, an easy amine, for example, uh, let's say... Let's just check it out. Yeah, let's stick with an easy, easy amine. By the way, can I just check that you don't need to know the naming of amines? I'm sure that was taken out. It used to be in the course. So if you come across that from an old paper, you might worry about the fact you can't name amines. Systematically name them, I'm afraid. But the good news is you don't need to anymore. It's been taken out right enough. Just checking. So uh, let's react this with, say, ethanoic acid. What's going to go on here? Well, this hydrogen here is, of course, going to join on to the non-bonded pair forming a data bond, and we're going to end up with something that looks like this. CH3COO, the negative on there. And then this is the other half of the alkyl ammonium salt. So it's going to look like NH2CH3 uh, with a positive on there. That is your alkyl ammonium salt. Do you have to name these? No, as well, which is good. Um, but you need to be able to recognize the structure of it. And then we need to cook this up. So give it a bit of heat. And it decomposes to form an amide. If I remember correctly, one of my junior students from a couple of years back, Ellie McDougall, um, asked about this. And I said, "Don't. what's the mechanism of it? She asked. And so we looked it up and we both thought, no, best not to know. And the good news is SQA doesn't want you to know either. What would the amide look like for this? Well, an amide is is actually from higher chemistry. It's like a part of a protein, very similar bond to a protein, which means it needs to have a C double bond O bonded to an N. And we can probably work out that's your C with a double bond O. That's the N. And the N is bonded to a CH3. And it's also bonded to only one H now. We'll get rid of this horrible positive charge on it. So this is our amide link. And this side of the amide link is just simply this. So that would be the structure of your amide that you would make if we started with this amine. I nearly named that from the old-fashioned days. And ethanoic acid. And that's it done for amines. Coffee time. Bye.